Hi, my name is Haley Martin, and this is my field trip presentation video for the Living Ocean Class Summer 2018. I'm standing here at the kayak launch where I went on the Negro Mazes of Matt Lachey kayak tour. I chose this tour because the mangroves in Matt Lachey are in my backyard, so it's important to us personally as it sustains the wildlife we enjoy, filters the water that attracts local tourism and fishermen, and most importantly, they are our first line of defense against hurricanes. These forests protect our home from wind and storm surges like the predicted 10 to 15 foot storm surge that Hurricane Irma was supposed to produce. They reduce erosion, dissipate wave energy, and absorb excess water produced by hurricanes. Tying into our course lesson on primary producers, the most significant concept that I learned on the tour is that the mangrove forests of Southwest Florida provide most of the protein that sustains the food web in our waterways. As you can see here, there are three species of mangroves that can be identified by their root systems in relation to the water level. White mangroves are found on higher ground and their root system is mostly underground. The black mangrove will be in areas within the intertidal zone and have distinct pencil-like roots that stick up out of the ground. The red mangrove is the one most of us are familiar with and known as the walking tree, as it has the recognizable prop roots that hold the tree up out of the salty water. Another defining characteristic is its hanging cigar-shaped propagules which are actually baby trees that fall into the water and float until they find a good place to anchor and make another red mangrove tree. Here we see the roots of both red mangrove and black mangrove. The black mangroves have roots that poke up out of the sediment instead of growing into it. These roots are called pneumatophores, which means air breathing roots. All plants need to breathe, so the black mangrove has developed these roots that act like snorkels allowing the tree to get air even though it is standing in seawater or soggy mud. The complex root systems of the mangrove ecosystems provide homes for many small marine organisms that I came across on my tour. One that didn't photograph so well was the blue crab, which is a decapod crab of the swimming crab family Fortunidae. They feed on plants, small fish, and nearly any other item they can find, including detritus which is waste or decomposing material. Blue crab larvae experience seven planktonic stages, one in which they float near the surface of seawater and feed on microorganisms. Eventually, they migrate landward via tides and end up in estuaries. Ultimately, blue crabs end up in brackish waters like the mangrove forest where they spend the rest of their lives. Not only are mangrove ecosystems important nursery areas for commercially valuable shrimp, shellfish, and fish species, but they also serve as important stopover points for many species of waterfowl. Some of the birds that I saw on my tour were the great blue heron, the snowy egret, the brown pelican, the anhinga, the double-crested cormorant, and the osprey. These birds frequent one of the most important types of coastal wetlands that contain salt-adapted plants, oxygen-depleted muds, and accumulations of organic matter. The primary producer, the mangrove tree, is eaten by crabs, the primary consumer, and the tree's decomposing leaves are then eaten by small fish, prawns, and lobsters growing up in the area. The unlucky crabs and fish are eaten by predatory birds and secondary and tertiary consumers. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed.